Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're going to go over how to draw Frost from uh, Mortal Kombat uh, 11. I mean, her, she's also in the other ones, some of the other ones, but um, we're just going to be going over that. We're gonna, I'm going to do a portrait style version of her like I've done for other Mortal Kombat characters. Uh, I'll put those in the description. If you haven't seen the other one, I did another one of Scorpion, I did one of Sub-Zero, I did one of uh, Baraka. But today I'm going to do Frost. So hopefully you dig it and let's get going into it. I'm going to go over this kind of portrait style though. I'm going to be using this. It's basically a black colored pencil. That's all I mean. It's called a Nero hard. I can't even see the number to that. A4, number four. But uh, it's, it's literally just a black colored pencil as far as I'm concerned. Um, let me get an eraser actually real quick. Uh, all right, cool. Got an eraser. So I'm going to start with and I'm gonna do, this one I'm gonna do very light. I'm thinking about maybe doing it in one layer. I, I'm doing a super light circle that I can see. I'm gonna assume that you cannot really see it. But you know what, I'm just gonna do it hard in fact so that you can see it. And I'll do it on two layers. So circle for the, the kind of the brain case essentially, the, the kind of the cranial part. A straight line down because I want her looking left. Eye line. She doesn't really have a nose line because she's covered in a mask. Uh, but I'm going to do the bottom of the chin right here and kind of approximate that. There's no particular rule on that. It's just I'm going to approximate it because she's wearing a mask over her features. <coughs> pulling up, bottom of the jaw, pulling back. Her eye line right here, for example, so that's her brow. Think of it like little sunglasses, you know, for the eyes. And I'm thinking about the pl the planes, right? The really broad planes of the head. So she has the front of the, by planes I mean, you know, like, like geometric form. So there is the front of the face generally, right? Where is it that the front of the face turns into the right side, side of the face, right? So right here, maybe that's gonna go back a little bit right here. So you have the front of the face and you have the side of the face. And that you have to keep that transition in mind because you're going to stick the ear on there. <clears throat> the ear is going to be, the top part of the ear usually touches or is in line with the uh, top of the brow. I'm going to draw a shape for the hair. She has uh, kind of parted hair one way, almost like a... I guess not really a pixie cut, uh, some a little bit more than that, a little bit longer than that. And I'm drawing a very broad hair shape for myself to just kind of keep track of. <clears throat> Again, and I say this in everything, uh, you, um, this first layer is for proportion only. Uh, Draw on the front part of the mask. It seems to have like this upside down triangle shape toward the front of it. Pulling down and then pulling up and it goes right next to her ear. Down the neck shape, she's got a bit of a thin neck. She's a feminine type so her neck tends to be thin, thinner. And I'll do a shape for her collar, a very vague shape. So this is my vague uh, first layer. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw that underneath another layer of uh, paper. And this is a 11, uh, eight and a half by 11 printing paper, by the way, I'm doing this on. This is normal paper, completely normal paper you can get in any store. <coughs> if you want to, I'll put an Amazon link below, but generally this is just something you can get in any store. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in kind of with value because I have my, I don't know if you can see it or not, but there is a vague, I can see my layer like barely through it. So that's good for proportion. Now I don't have to think about that and I can free up that part of my brain so that I can think about details. Because if you're thinking about details before you have proportion solved, you're gonna put an eyeball really pretty and rendered and clean, but it's gonna be completely in the wrong uh, placement. You know, it's gonna be too far to the right, too far to the left, and that's gonna kill it because placement is king in my opinion. That's just my opinion. 
So now that I see the placement behind it, I can just worry about, you know, shading and details. The, the, you know, you never, I mean, the only time you can ever really start with that stuff is something that, you know, if you've just been doing it so much that your placement, you know it's correct, then, then you know, go for it. But generally, even at my stage, I, I, I will really, really, uh, you know, hammer my placement before I start anything, usually, you know, unless it's like a monster or something you can kind of like flub or you can just kind of, um, you can kind of toy with. Uh, I'm going to details first right now, so I'm just kind of putting in value. Sorry about that, my computer is wigging out and making noise. I'm just kind of going into her eyes, and her eyes are more or less just kind of normal eyes. Uh, outside of the, uh, she has a bit of a glowing iris. But I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, I don't really know if I want to make that come across though. She has this like pissed off look in every freaking ad. I'll definitely make her a little bit mad, but not like ultra angry the way she is like in every ad, <laughs> in every Mortal Kombat ad. So that's kind of where I'm placing her irises. And going back up here, kind of Doing these vague uh, shapes for a little bit more detailed, vague but more detailed shapes for her hair. Uh, the reason I'm doing that is because I slowly want to bring this up like a photo. If you've ever used a uh, Polaroid, because I know Polaroids are kind of making a comeback in a hipster way, but if you ever use a Polaroid, you can see that you take a photo and it starts to slowly reveal itself. Uh, Starts to slowly, kind of, kind of build up, right? You're, 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 I'm doing it lighter, and then it starts to get darker and darker, more detailed the more I go into it. That's kind of the one way I like working on portraits. And that could be one way that you work on portraits. It depends, you know, a lot of people have. One day I want to go over, I think I might have done that already in videos, but I want to go over different ways to uh, kind of bring up uh, certain drawings and drawing types. And I kind of want to, I'll do it, maybe I'll do a video of that like tomorrow. But there's there are different ways to approach drawing. I approach it pretty much one way all the time. That's like my way that, you know, again, that a lot of people do. But there are different ways to kind of bring up uh, for per se a drawing and this is one of them you're bringing it up very Very slowly and gradually, you know um, some people just like going boom like deep into hard dark detail right off the bat But you don't have to do that it, it's really up to you I Pulled up the chin a little bit see from my original uh, thing in the back there you can always refine what you originally refined as well. Going into the ear. Putting in a vague placement for that ear. Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're gonna go over how to draw Frost from uh, Mortal Kombat uh, 11. I mean, her, she's also in the other ones, some of the other ones, but um, 
We're just gonna be going over that. We're gonna, I'm gonna do a portrait style version of her like I've done for other Mortal Kombat characters. Uh, I'll put those in the description. If you haven't seen the other one, I did another one of Scorpion, I did one of Sub-Zero, I did one of uh, Baraka. But today I'm gonna do Frost. So hopefully you dig it and <clears throat> let's get going into it. I'm gonna go over this kind of portrait style though. I'm gonna be using this. It's basically a black colored pencil. That's all, I mean, it's called a Nero hard I can't even see the number to that. A4, number four. But uh, it's it's literally just a black colored pencil, as far as I'm concerned. Um, let me get an eraser, actually, real quick. Uh, <clears throat> all right, cool, got an eraser. So, I'm gonna start with, and I'm gonna do, this one I'm gonna do very light. I'm thinking about maybe doing it in one layer. I, I'm doing a super light circle that I can see. I'm gonna assume that you cannot really see it, but you know what, I'm just going to do it hard, in fact, so that you can see it. And I'll do it on two layers. So, circle for the, the kind of the brain case, essentially, the, the kind of the cranial part. A straight line down, because I want her looking left. Eye line. She doesn't really have a nose line, because she's covered in a mask. Uh, but I'm going to do the bottom of the chin right here, and kind of approximate that. There's no particular rule on that. It's just I'm gonna approximate it because she's wearing a mask over her features. <coughs> pulling up, bottom of the jaw, pulling back. Her eye line right here, for example, so that's her brow. Think of it like little sunglasses, you know, for the eyes. And I'm thinking about the pl the planes, right? The really broad planes of the head. So she has the front of the, by planes I mean, you know, like like geometric forms. So there is the front of the face generally, right? Where is it that the front of the face trends into the right side, side of the face, right? So right here, maybe that's gonna go back a little bit right here. So you have the front of the face and you have the side of the face. And that, you have to keep that transition in mind because you're gonna stick the ear on there. <clears throat> the ear is gonna be, the top part of the ear usually touches, or is in line with the uh, top of the brow. I'm going to draw a shape for the hair. She has uh, kind of parted hair one way. Almost like, a, I guess, not really a pixie cut, uh, something a little bit more than that, a little bit longer than that. So, going over here, I think I need to sharpen this pencil, to be honest. God, this sharpener sucks. I need a better sharpener, which I can't find at the moment. But, uh, we'll just have to deal with this. Going in here, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start putting in some darker values, mostly in the eye because the eye is the window to the soul, they say. Um, and she does have a bit of a glowing, like glowing rim, so. Going in. Darkening kind of the eye, eye, eyelash area. And I'm already kind of doing it differently than I should have. I should have done that far side eye first so that I don't have my hand over this as I'm drawing it. But let's try that out. thicker as it comes closer here. Eyelash, 
give her a little bit more eyelashes because she's a uh, female. But not too much. She doesn't have a ton of it. Um, <clears throat> gonna give the overall, I would say the overall kind of shat, like light. The light source is gonna be coming from above over here, but I might put it back. Pretty sure I'm gonna put a backlit source. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna purposefully leave a little bit of lightness there. It's extremely dark. It's an, uh, you know, it's behind the neck in her armor. And then also, I'm gonna put some darkness on the outside of her face to kind of accentuate the fact that there's gonna be light coming, uh, hitting the brim of the side of her face here. And it's gonna be, it's gonna fade away. Very fine art style. Could fix that in a little bit. No, I mean, just kind of mess with it, mess with the shapes. Now let's go into the strands of her hair. Where the darkest darks will be where her hair is kind of touching her head, the cast shadow onto her head, because you want it to kind of really attach to the head there. Visually, you want it to attach to the head. But it's also just like that, really. I mean, it's pretty much the way light hits hair, anyway. Pulling some strands, or I'm remembering the direction. That's the thing. It's parting from here, and you're remembering the direct, the general direction of the hair. Her hair is light blue, so I'm not gonna do anything too crazy with it. Just gonna draw a few strands over here, and maybe merge where the shadows of the strands ends up. Up here, pulls down. And gonna do the same over here, pull some strands downward. Dark right below the ear, because casting a shadow onto the neck. The neck itself, right, the chin itself will cast a shadow onto the neck. It's not going to be quite as dark as the dark behind her there, right here. 
Not be quite as dark. And I'm gonna darken this as well because that's really behind her. I wanna, I wanna be able to push that back visually. There's uh, some designs uh, of her armor, etc., on in here. Or, or, you know, it's like a robot, right? So it, there's a couple of things here, but I'm not really gonna harden that stuff out that much. I'm just gonna indicate it because this is more of a fine art kind of style thing, and not so much a concept art. Uh, I mean, I guess it could be concept art to do do stuff like that, but as of right now, it's not gonna be that. And I'm just mostly kind of indicating that armor through small lines. She's like we have an armor on the back on the side there. But again, I'm not gonna go into full detail with it. I'm just gonna kinda let it vignette out. There is purple though, toward the middle of her outfit, so there is a value to that. The color creates a value. And I will put that on there. But uh But that's kind of it for that. So let's go to her face plate, right? That's gonna be pretty, doesn't have to be intensive, but uh, as well, we're doing this again in a fine art kind of style. Uh, there is a bit of a change of plane here, and I wanna show that change of plane because it's, it's almost like a, I wanna think of it, I mean, it's some of like, it's, it's very similar, obviously, Sub-Zero's mask and Scorpion's mask, but it kind of reminds me more of like knights, like something like the, when you look at the face of a knight, you know, like a knight in shiny armor. When you look at that, that that's kind of a shape I see more with her. I don't know why, that's just, you know, I see it on the other ones too, but I think because they're, I don't know, just something about it strikes me more like a, a knight. But same thing on this, I'm gonna indicate this. I'm not gonna put too much emphasis on the armor because this is a, Again, a fine art way of doing it. And there's another kind of split in the middle of a mask. This is gonna be a light on this side. And there will be a thin line within this portion of the armor. A line up, oh, sorry, like a triangle up angular shape down as well and there will be lines of kind of glowing blue along uh, among there not not too many maybe like four or five either one is fine I'm not gonna put them on the far side I think that'll be too much I'm gonna keep that just a little bit dark and then I'm gonna give value to those in between there Not too dark of value. Let me... All right. So now I'm gonna work on kind of evening it out. To me, it's looking a little bit too PC, meaning it's just kind of uh, feels like it's a little bit like in, it's the different things are in different drawings. That's the way I kind of feel right now. So I kind of want to unify the drawing, and I'm going to kind of play with the values. Some of the ones I even talked about. So, right here along the nose. Let's go a couple right here in the, along the temple here. With some unifying value. I'm gonna throw a darker value toward the bottom and it darken some of this up I needed to kind of ground to ground this I might give it a light value across the whole thing actually just like a light I'm using the side of the pencil for this and then <clears throat> 
I'm gonna put some a little bit of value behind her. In a similar decorative way as I did on the other side over there. Going into the eyes again, kind of toying with those. A little bit of cast shadow from the hair. On the head here. Giving it some soft, kind of soft uh, quality to it. Adding a little bit more value to the hair. Let's go back to the face mask. Um, who's your favorite character, guys, in uh, Mortal Kombat 11? Mortal I've been playing that like crazy. I've been playing story mode right now. It's pretty amazing. Um, it's kind of weird that there's a lot of... I don't know if anybody noticed this. Uh, maybe maybe it's something everybody said, but there seems to be like a lot of similarities between the story of... Uh, it kind of reminds me of uh, Infinity War. <laughs> like this, the story mode of, uh, of Mortal Kombat 11. It reminds me of it. I'm not saying it's just like it. I'm saying it reminds me of it. Maybe I will have to throw some dark right here to kind of even it out. I just, I'll probably have to throw some dark in the mask to make, to unify it. Let's see if that works. The drawing's about experimentation. Even though I said I wasn't going to do that, I'm like, you know what? Let's do it. If it works, it works. If it works visually, it works visually. We'll darken in these areas of the mask. It'll probably make it feel more solid. Which it uh, kind of is, so. I'm making it. And I'm gonna give some value to the bottom of the, of the mask here. Just again, toying with uh, shapes, not so much with shapes, but toying with, with value. I'm, to I'm toying with darks and lights. I'm trying to see what looks attractive and unified and what doesn't. And I'm kind of kind of toying with uh, the drawing at this point. This is again how you refine stuff. You go through it with a fine tooth comb. It's really pretty amazingly fun, I want to say, to go through and refine stuff. I'm going to have to cut the video pretty soon because I don't want it to keep you here for like an hour, so. But, like an hour, yeah, I don't want to keep you here for a few hours or whatever. Uh, but let me get up and look at it. I usually just have to stand back for a second and look at it. Pretty good. And we'll throw some darks over here. I should have like cut it off, I think, a little bit higher up, in my opinion. But um not a huge not a huge deal. Alright, I think, you know what, I'm going to do one more thing here. I'm going to throw unify some of the values here in the hair. 
And after that, I think that would be good enough for, you know, a demo. Or essentially, yeah, this is a demonstration, so. Anyways, that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for watching. I really do appreciate you watching this. I worked on Frost from Mortal Kombat. If you have another Mortal Kombat character you want me to go over, this is the same style I went over Scorpion, Sub-Zero, and Baraka in, so check those out. I'll link those in the bottom there, so you can check them out. So thank you so much, guys. I will see you in the next video. I'm going to be posting every single day, so see you soon.